Welcome into Tech Sacks Rewind presented by Yeti. I'm David Nuno. Nick Savage with us there behind the glass. Nick, I don't, was today a negative show? It felt kind of like it. Yes. The whole show? Not the whole show because, I mean, you mixed in some football talk in there and OB was uh, pretty, you know, but he, he, he tends to be a little uh, jaded when it comes to Aggie football, but he, he showed some positivity. We were a little jaded on the basketball game. Yeah, that was the negative side. Yeah, happy with the well, happy with the effort, not happy with the offensive execution, if that's the right word to use there, Nick. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I don't have the numbers in front three of me. Three of 19 when, from the three. Thank you. When you do that, not good. No, not good. All right, so, but we talked Aggie basketball. We had a lot of guests breaking it all down. Uh, we had Houston Texans sideline reporter Juan Haris on the show. That's uh, John Harris. I don't know if you knew that, Nick. That's John Harris. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for your approval there. John Harris breaking down. He thinks uh, Michigan would have beat Georgia if Georgia would have made it to the championship game. I think Georgia would have won it all, but they weren't invited, so does it even matter? We talked a little bit about that. We talked about the NFL playoffs, and we had Ryan Broniger in here breaking down the transfer portal. Good times there. Had by all. Check it out here on The Rewind. OB, you just made me feel good about something a moment ago. You were going through those rankings, or you were going through the final rankings, I yeah. should say, and then you're like, bruh. You actually used the word bruh. <laughs> no, I didn't. no, you didn't. You were like, bruh, A&M had a chance at all these games. Kind of go through I, that. I'm looking at the the final AP Top 25. Alabama was fifth. They were in overtime with the t- national champion. You had an opportunity to win that game. You let it get away yep. like they did. You're on the road against Ole Miss with a lead in the final minutes. And Ole Miss finished ninth. Mm-hmm. And you know, you're on the road against Tennessee, and you just – Piss that one away. Yep. And they finished 17th, right? And you did this with a backup quarterback and some coaching a bad issues. culture, some coaching issues. So with a starting quarterback, I, I hate – I'm doing this to myself. I hate to do this to myself. I'm I'm being uh, Al Pacino in Godfather 3. You're bringing me back. Every pull, time I try to get out, they pull me back in. There you go. And I'm thinking, all right, with a better coaching and, a, and your quarterback and – you know, guys coming in to replace the guys going out, and maybe there's a better culture. Maybe that top 24, 25 ranking isn't so outlandish. Next year, what would make you happy? Obviously, playoffs, 11 wins. I'm just saying, like, if what kind of improvement? Is a nine-win season going to make you feel happy? Okay, nine wins. Before the bowl, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, uh, yeah, nine wins would make me happy. But I still maintain that A&M, with all the investment and all the advantages, should expect 10 wins a year. Thank you. By the way, I've gotten to a point that outside of the Orange Bowl, bowl in 2020, bowl wins don't count on my record anymore, unless it's a playoff. Yeah. Like, I don't care what you do in the taxidermy bowl. I don't care. I mean, I want you to win. But, like, I'm not adding that to my 10-win season. Oh, hey, we got 10 wins. I, uh, unless it's a bowl of substance, I don't care anymore. You're absolutely right. I think there is this thought that, well, you know, with 12 teams, we'll get four from the SEC. You know, like, we just got to be top four. Like, uh, I don't think so. Um, because if, if you're thinking that in the SEC, even the most reasonable Big Ten fan is going, well, if you're thinking you're getting four from the SEC, well, we're getting three from the Big Ten. Well, okay, that's seven. Oh, wait a second. You got to have five champions, right? So you're only getting seven, seven, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, at large bids. At, at large, and one of them's got to go to a, a non power five, right? So you start doing the numbers on this, man. Wait a second. We, we can't afford to, to end up sitting there at, at 13, 14, 15 and, and let the, the committee decide our fate. I mean, that just can't happen. So, I mean, well, I think Ole Miss at the end of the year, well, at the end of the regular season, I think was 11. I think Ole Miss was 11. And Ole Miss had one hell of a year. 11. The rankings don't always match up with what the committee looks at. But that be more right about this, that you got to be very, very careful. I think you might team in there. And I think the way you get a 10 and 2 team in there is if that particular team has put a gauntlet of a schedule. For example, Michigan's schedule next year, Washington, Texas, State, 
Oregon's in there, but I think Oregon might be a, another year. I can't remember that one. Um, but they play five teams that are legit top 10 ranked teams. So being those 11 and 1, 10 and 2, but doesn't win the league, but goes through that gauntlet of a schedule, like, holy cow. Um, things I said was, was Texas. That's a non conference game for Michigan, but I think that's going to help a team that does finish. But I'm not sure we're good enough right now to sweep any team like we did several times last year. Right. So I think we can make up for the loss at home against LSU by going down there in less than two weeks and winning. Obviously, a win against Kentucky on Saturday would be a great uh, boost for us, and then it gets us going on the road to Arkansas. At the same time, we lost eight games two years ago. We could drop several in a row, and uh, you know, then our our hole is really dug. Well, let's play this game real quick, all right? Because it sucks right now. LSU Auburn <laughs> losses to start the season, right? I, I'm, I'm blunt sometimes. <laughs> but let's say you win these next three, which is a big if. I know that, but just you get Kentucky at home. If you play like you played against Auburn, at least from a rebounding standpoint, well, you got to get better offensively. But and that's going to be a harder game. But just for this conversation, you win that game, you go to Arkansas, that's not a gimme, we know that, but you win that game and you win at LSU. It doesn't erase what has happened, but at least you're like, oh, all right, we're, we're, we're back in this thing, we have a chance now. You start losing some of these. Now you've put yourself in a huge hole. Absolutely, especially to win the league. But uh, I think right now uh, the coaching staff is probably figuring out a way to get more consistent and get the confidence up. The one thing I like about Buzz's teams is they seem to play better when their back's against the wall. You know, when you count them out, they just don't quit. Right. I, I loved our competitiveness last night. I mean, I thought we gave ourselves a chance to win. When you go on the road, uh, most coaches think, let's shorten the game, make it a five-minute ball game. And you can beat anybody in five minutes, you know, Sometimes it's difficult in 40 minutes. And then playing at Auburn, uh, I've talked to a lot of coaches in the SEC. They seem to think that's the hardest place to play in the league right now, the Auburn uh, you know, venue, where – 20 years ago, you know, it was a joke. They'd have, you know, a tenth of the arena filled up. No one cared about basketball. Right. And now it's, uh, it's a tough place to play. So we did some good things last night. Uh, they just need to keep working hard and hopefully get the breaks down the stretch. What is the latest, if there is a latest, with uh, Brandon Johnson? Uh, I don't know where they're at on Brandon Johnson. I, I, we felt pretty good about it ending the weekend. He's a nickel from Duke. Yep. And he is a true nickel. So – and I believe that's what he's even labeled as on the Duke football roster from last year was a nickelback. Uh, and you would think that nobody knows more about the kid and how he would fit into what they what A&M wants to do defensively than Mike Elko. Uh, and so I, I think it would just be coming down to, again, like what does that position look like now currently yep. with the guys they've got committed? And then what is Brandon Johnson looking for in his next stop? Because – Look, I don't know who's going to play in the secondary. And as Billy said on the radio show earlier this week, like you might roll into game one next year and your starting corners might be Will Lee and B.J. Mays. You know what? That also might be Javon Thomas and Bravion Rogers because just because these guys have some struggles as true freshmen does not mean they're not talented players. Right. In fact, they're very talented kids. Go look at the schools that you beat out for both of those guys. So – they're still – like what they had to do was go bring in some real talent so that you had options and that the cream could rise to the top in spring and fall practice. Um, so when you look at what they've done at corner, when you look at what they've done at safety, you feel good about whatever comes out of the wash there yep. is going to have been really pushed in practice and they will have performed well against a, what we think is going to be a pretty talented offense. I'm looking at it right there. Trey Jones from Central Michigan. The Ricky Wright from Vanderbilt. And Trey Will Jones Lee. is here already. Will Lee is here already. Uh, the Ricky Wright is going to be one that's got to graduate this spring from Vanderbilt. Maybe, so, yeah. so, and he's a big dude. Is he? He's like six foot four, 210, 220 pounds. So, like, who knows where how he's going to impact the game? And, and you know, is he a true safety? Is he a nickel safety where he's playing in the box more? So I think he gives you a lot of positional versatility. Nick, uh, along with buying Texax coffee at texax.com slash coffee, what do you think the people should do today? Well, they should subscribe. They should uh, also purchase a premium uh, subscription to texax.com. Nice. <laughs> That's like step 1A. Uh, but subscribe on YouTube. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram. 
You're hearing that noise? Yeah. All right. What? Did I make oh, it? Oh, yikes. Did I miss it? There's nothing there. Uh, Did I go three from 19 from there? Sorry. Yes. Like, comment, subscribe. Anyways, see ya. See ya.